the Indian Ocean, one of the world's oldest and largest free trade zones. For centuries, trade and migration have marked the history of the many communities living along its shores. But the name of one place on the coast of East Africa has long captured people's imagination. Zanzibar, the Spice Island. We're sailing towards the old trading port of Zanzibar. It's a 19th century Omani capital just off the Tanzanian mainland. For centuries, traders of all skin colours were brought here by Dow wooden vessels, just like the one they were on. And each of those peoples left their own mark on the island. That's why Zanzibar has one of the richest food cultures in East Africa. <laughs> Street food, as the name suggests, is strictly about affairs of the street. But for Zanzibar Island, the ocean is its road network. And dows are the link between the sea and the land. So in the old days, instead of eating on the street, they would have their most colourful culinary fair here on a dow. So that's what we're going to do today. And helping me is Mariam Hamdan, a fantastic Zanzibari cook and food connoisseur. Yeah, today I'm going to cook a Zanzibari feast, which has a lot of influence from Arabia, from India, from Europe, and all over the world. While Mariam gets busy with her cooking, the shoreline of Zanzibar has become tantalizingly close. So how can I resist a quick trip into town? And as a sports journalist, I've decided to check out something close to my heart. Modern Zanzibar has one major passion. And I've come to meet a group of girls who are mad about the game. Nice to meet you. Hi. Well, welcome. The Women Fighters is the first ever all-girls football club on the predominantly Muslim island of Zanzibar. Their coach, Nazra, is dedicated to helping the team grow. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. 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 So ladies, which are your favourite football teams? Arsenal. I come to Zanzibar and it's Arsenal, Manchester United and Chelsea again. They are crazy of a broad team. Hey, hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. Excellent. Sisi tunacheza mechi. Uko tayari kuwa popoja na sisi kucheza yu mechi? They, they say they, they have say. a match to play. Okay. You would like to join us oh. to have a match? I'll try. Yeah, Thank you. With my new rather daunting sports challenge ahead, it's time to get back to cooking on the Dow, where Mariam's first dishes are ready. So, Mariam, what have you made for me? Oh, I've made uh, boko boko. Okay. What's boko boko? Boko boko is uh, made of uh, wheat and meat. And then we have spices. Okay. We so have uh, ginger. Ginger, yep. Cumin seed Cumin powder. Yep. And this yep. one. This uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon yep. powder. This actually uh, came from the Arab. Oh, it's a bit hot, so oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe you try it here. A little. Let's see how we can taste it. It tastes a bit like porridge, but with chicken in it. But that doesn't sound like it's very nice, but actually it is. <laughs> a little bit of spices in it, not not over, overbearing, but it's nice. <laughs> okay, I've also made you pilau. Oh, okay, great. Yes. That's a bit more familiar. And so uh, is this Indian influence or...? Yeah, Indian and Arabic. So this is so uh, this? made uh, of uh, rice and then meat and uh, a, a lot of spices. Ginger, Ginger and then yep. garlic for the meat. We use this, these sticks. You we don't use sticks, this yes. flour. We use also uh, pepper cloves, uh, cloves yep. black paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Mariam, we've used a whole load of spices in this pilau yeah, dish, but yeah. how important are spices for cooking My in Zanzibar? 
how do you expect Basque to cook without <laughs> spices? So we've seen from Mariam's cooking that much of Zanzibari food is about the spices. But spice isn't just about flavouring food here. In fact, until not so long ago, a lot of the island's wealth was built upon spices. So I'm going to get back off the dow and find out more. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? I join you. Okay. <laughs> for a Della Della, which is basically the only kind of public transport that there is in Zanzibar. And I'm heading towards one of the biggest spice gardens on the island, which is also now something of a tourist attraction. Thank you. Bye. Here I have a... In his spice garden, Yusuf, a third-generation plantation owner, tells me how his Arab ancestors started this business. How did you get all of this land? Oh, this is uh, from Sultan originally. After Sultan, my grandfather from Oman. Okay. But now, I think, 110 years ago. Zanzibar's original settlers were Bantu-speaking Africans. But the Arabs, especially Omanis, have had a huge influence here. They set up trading colonies in Zanzibar in the 17th century, ending 200 years of Portuguese dominance on the island. In 1832, the Sultan of Oman moved his capital from Muscat to Zanzibar, which had become a major slave trading center. The Sultan then encouraged the commercial farming of cloves. In 1873, the slave trade was abolished, but the spice trade continued to flourish, giving Zanzibar wealth and prestige, as well as a legendary name the Spice Island. Cinnamon. This cinnamon. Right. This yes, that looks, best cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. Look at some. Oh yes, and that looks. Try. Yeah. Oh, I can smell it already. Yeah. Actually, that strong cinnamon smell. Oh, yeah, good for cooking. That's quite, yeah. <laughs> that's quite um, spicy. Yeah. Spicy, yeah. And here, this fall down. This fresh clove. And this black is seed. The seed using for for ladies like uh, lipstick. Lipstick. If you if you if you scratch this, not ma not make like this. No, no, <laughs> just uh, if you if you bind and stay like that, yeah, you know. Is that okay. Mm. But it looks like a colour that might suit mm. me actually. It's quite a good, uh, very red. <laughs> and there's another surprise around the corner. I have a gift for you. Here. You have a gift for yeah, me. Yeah. Oh, you've already given this me some. Gift for all people who come here and. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. Oh, like, it fits as well. <laughs> it's perfect size. Basket. Handbag from coconut. Oh. <laughs> All this from coconut. Well, that goes with my outfit. Yeah. Oh, and jewellery yeah. as well. Thank you very much. Yusuf is a charming guide, oh, but good. his spice tour seems more theme park than reality. The truth of the matter is in the last four decades, Zanzibar's spice trade has gone into sharp decline. Today, the Spice Island, once the world's largest clove producer, is more of a tourist resort. <laughs> Welcome Zanzibar, my friend, yeah? Zanzibar's tourism boom has masked the steady decline of one of the most prestigious trading ports in East Africa. In the late 19th century, with the European scramble for Africa, Britain took control of the Omani Sultanate of Zanzibar. They declared the island a free port, and trade continued to grow until the 1950s. But a political storm was well on its way, as anti-colonialism spread across Africa. The major change that came to Zanzibar was starting in 1963, when first Zanzibar got independence. Within a month, there was a revolution. Within three months, there was a union with Tanzania. Zanzibar lost its autonomy after a very short period. The Zanzibari revolution aimed to give power back to the Africans. It went on to become one of the bloodiest chapters in the island's history. The Arabs in particular were targeted because they were the landowners, uh, especially in the 19th century, the bigger landowners who also owned slaves. So that ideology of slavery was also revived uh, to serve in the political struggle of the 1960s. 
most of the Omani people were killed. About more than 14,000 people were killed, tortured, cut into pieces, murdered, butchered. If that kind of thing were to happen now, we would call it ethnic cleansing. But it wasn't just the Zanzibari Arabs who suffered during the revolution. The island's Indian community, which formed the merchant class, was also seen as the enemy. We, we lost everything within, within a spur of a moment, down from the mountain to the ground. The aftermath of the revolution saw an exodus of the Asiatic community. But the trading port lost not only its traders, its whole identity was under threat too. Right from the first century, you have Yemenis coming, and then later you, on you had the Persians, the Shirazis who came, the Arabs who came, the Indians who came. So throughout these 2,000 years, that kind of intermingling has been going on. So the culture uh, of, uh, of Zanzibar, the economy of Zanzibar, had two faces, Africa, but also there is an Indian Ocean heritage. The revolution was to try to deny, to erase the Indian Ocean face of it and looking to Africa exclusively. Yet the turn to Africa came at a cost. Its ramifications would be the cause of tension and violence on the island. Back on the Dao, Mariam has dished up more food. And then we have these ripe bananas. Some of them are, are very long. We call them konoatem or elephant stars. Elephant stars, okay. If we use this coconut, we break it into two, yep. and then grind it, and then we get this uh, coconut. Yes. We use the cardamom powder, we put it there, put a lot of raisin on yep. it, and uh, we boil it. Okay, well, let me try it and see what it, yeah. what it tastes like. We definitely taste the coconut and the cardamom that you mentioned. Yeah. That's good. Apart from banana, I have another dish. Okay. This is the mohogo. Mohogo. Mohogo, you see this is cassava. Okay. Let me show you. Great. This is it. Okay. Yeah. It looks like potatoes. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like potatoes. You're right. You're right. You can it? test a little. Okay. It tastes a bit like potatoes as well. <laughs> Some people, they use the fish on top. That's nice. Mixed yeah. together. Mariam's cooking is a fine example of the African influence in Zanzibari food. When it comes to politics, this African influence is considered a hindrance by many. In 1964, after a bloody revolution, Zanzibar hastily entered a political union with Tanzania in East Africa, formerly known as Tanganyika. The union was designed to prevent the spread of chaos in the region, but for many in Zanzibar, this was the beginning of decline. When the union was formed immediately, 11 union matters were created, and therefore the power over those 11, 11 matters shifted to the mainland. Zanzibar government with very limited autonomy, which is constantly shrinking. Decision-making powers now rested with the union government based in Tanzania's capital city, Dar es Salaam. All the taxes are paid in Dar es Salaam. And we buy everything from Dar es Salaam for Zanzibar. Not like before. Before everything was imported for Zanzibar and the ships were coming to Zanzibar. So many ships and so many dows. Now you hardly get one ship, three ships in a month. Nasser Mazrui comes from a long line of Arab merchants who've traded in East Africa for over 300 years. But today he finds it easier to build hotels rather than to trade. We have our, our cargo within four weeks or three weeks. Now four months, five months, because the port is not working. There's no business. The business has been killed completely. This is Zanzibar Mill. Shirali Chamsi runs a successful hotel business, but compared to his Indian ancestors who made a name for themselves in the spice trade, he feels there's a distinct lack of opportunity now. We have got all the potentials, we have got all the things, but we are being deprived of that one by the union affairs. But trade isn't the only thing that's been frustrated by the union. 
football has two. And with our big match drawing close, I've joined up with the women footballers for a much needed training session. As we're playing a men's team, the challenge ahead is tough, but these girls have never had it easy. In recent years, the Zanzibari Football Association sought full membership of FIFA, but the World Football Governing Body rejected their application on the grounds that the island is not an independent state. On the other hand, the Tanzanian Football Federation on the mainland, known as the TFF, has been receiving full support. Zanzibar didn't get direct assistance from FIFA. All the assistance going to TFF and this TFF, I can say they do a lot of things, but normally or mainly in the mainland no, rather than Zanzibar. We play just as well as they do. They play with two legs, so do we. They can head the ball and so can we. But whenever there is a tournament, they leave us out or just select one person from our side. I just wish Zanzibar had its own team, so we wouldn't have to be part of the Tanzanian national team. Only then could we compete in other countries. As part of the Tanzanian team, we don't have a chance. And it's not just the women's football club that's demanding greater independence. The voice of dissent has been growing elsewhere, too. While Mariam continues her cooking on the Dow, I've decided to explore the region where most of Zanzibar's food and spices are grown. We're at the domestic airport in Nguja. It's jam-packed. It's not normally as busy as this, but all these people are heading off for the religious celebration of Hajj. <laughs> We're about to go to Pemba. I've been told that the uh, boats are pretty unreliable, so we're going to get this flight. It's only about 15 minutes. Pemba Island is part of the Zanzibar archipelago. Historically, it's this island's vast clove plantations that have provided the spices for trade. In recent years, though, Zanzibar has seen much political violence as the opposition party in Pemba has been increasingly vocal in its demands for independence from Tanzania. To speak to the islanders, ever the sports journalist, I head straight for a local sporting event. I'm in Kuyu, which is a tiny village in Pemba. There are lots of people here today, though, because there's a big bullfight happening, which is a tradition in Zanzibar brought in by the Portuguese. But there's one big difference, and that's that the bull doesn't get killed. Afterwards, I've come to talk to the bullfighters who, like everyone else that I've met, are mad about football. All of them are Arsenal. <laughs> Tell them I have met Arsene Wenger. He is a very nice man. Yeah. Arsenal Wenger, coach. I have met him. I have spoken to him. <laughs> you send our their greetings. I will do. Well, Arsenal's coach, Arsene Wenger, may be popular here in Pemba, but politics arouses even bigger passion among the bullfighters. Whenever aid is brought to Tanzania, it doesn't go to who it's meant for. It goes to people with big pillars. Small people like us don't get any benefit. So the most important thing for us is a complete leadership change. We're hoping for change. We want to have a leader whom we voted for. Others feel union with Tanzania has made them second-class citizens. Even our most qualified people can get jobs. They, on the other hand, give jobs to their friends who are not even educated. I want to see independence as soon as possible. We should stay as Zanzibar, and Tanzania should remain as the mainland. Hey. In the streets of Pemba, the political fervour that I've seen in the bullfighters explains itself. The scene here speaks of neglect and economic hardship. 
a stark contrast to the tourist boom I saw earlier in Zanzibar's main town. But the disparity between the two parts of Zanzibar doesn't stop people from being united by a desire for change. Why it should happen and why should not we fight to revive it and to achieve what is lost? We can't breathe, you know. We can't breathe. We're not free to breathe. But with that anger and despair, there is vision and determination too. Zanzibar's survival economically can only be based if Zanzibar turns to be a marketplace. You can't teach a bird to fly, you can't teach a fish to swim, you can't teach Zanzibar to trade. When the opportunity comes, the trade will come up like that and we are going to be success successful. And finally, my big sporting moment has arrived and I really don't want to let my team down. I have a lot more fit than I am. Not losing yet, though. Thank you. Well, I didn't play the whole 90 minutes, but I'm still shattered. Strangely emotional as well. We did lose 2-1, but at least I tried to give it my best shot. <laughs> How did you find the game? They're great. Huh? They're such good players. They all played really well. Yeah. yeah. Very good. This is Zanzibar Futures. And for the girls, I have a special treat. OK, girls. Now we are going to have our feast. Please welcome Karimuni Jamani. Okay. fantastic journey of discoveries, not just sharing my passion of food with the Zanzibaris, but also finding out about their independent spirit. And that independent spirit is deeply rooted in the Indian Ocean, where the story of Zanzibar began. This cultural heritage has not only given Zanzibar a rich and varied cuisine, but it continues to inspire the islanders in their struggle for greater autonomy and a new identity.